Views and opinions expressed within the following program are solely those of the individual. These views and opinions do not necessarily represent those of Shaw TV. Hey Calgary, I'm Kevin Chorney. Today is Thursday, February 14th, and this is Calgary Now. For many reasons, monogamy has been the relationship structure norm for centuries in North America. Aside from the legal and religious reasons, for most it makes simple sense to have one partner at a time. Figuring out one person is complicated enough. Why take on more than you can handle? But as the traditional definition of marriage evolves, divorce rates remain high and young people are putting off marriage until a later date, alternative relationship structures are gaining popularity. Polymory relationships, not to be confused with polygamy, are more commonly known as an open relationship. On the surface, it may seem ideal to someone not comfortable with a monogamous relationship, but like all relationships, intimate or not, the keys are communication, openness, and honesty. How do polymory relationships work? Do they work? And how are Canadians adapting their relationships to work in today's culture? This week marks Valentine's Day 2013. People everywhere will enjoy quiet time with their loved one and many lavish gifts will be given. Romance will certainly be in the air as it is every time this year. So how does this all work if you have multiple Valentines? If you have loved ones and not just a loved one, and they have a loved one who has a loved one who has a loved one. Sounds confusing, right? For many Calgarians, however, monogamy is out and polyamory, or poly, is in. So what is a polyamorous relationship? By definition, it's described as consensual, ethical, and responsible non-monogamy. Relationships come easy to some and are a lot of work for others, so I'm sure this sounds like a nightmare for many of you and perhaps a dream come true for others. It's not swinging, it's not polygamy, it's polyamory. I'm about to sit down with a guest in an attempt to shed a little light on this fascinating alternative lifestyle. Stay with us. Polyamory is simply a way to start a conversation with your partner. We all have friends who we care about more than maybe we should. We've all been cheated on. We've all cheated on. Polyamory is simply a, a catchphrase that allows you to have an open discussion about the relationship you have with the people that you are engaged with. And that, above anything else, is probably the most important thing that you can do in a relationship. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Rovena Sky joining us on the program to answer all of our questions related to polyamory. Well, Vanna, thanks so much for being here tonight. Hey, Kevin, thank you so much for having me here. So I want you to tell me, tell me all about yourself. You're more than qualified to be here. Please, what are you all about? I, I'm an intimacy coach. I'm also a tantra teacher. I support people in many different types of relationship and lifestyles that they choose. Uh, it's my passion to support people to find answers and information and to know they're not the only ones struggling in their relationships or in their lifestyle. It is a passion, I would think. It is my passion, absolutely. Very good, very good. So, swinging. I think a lot of people understand what a swinging or swinger's lifestyle is all about. It's mm -hmm. essentially intimacy outside of a relationship. How does it differ from polyamory? Maybe, if you would, just describe for our viewers the typical or average polyamorous relationship. Uh, uh, absolutely. And there are a couple of definitions of polyamory. One is having emotional relationships, more than one emotional relationship at the same time. And another is having more than one sexual relationship with the knowledge and consent of everyone concerned. So some people might be married and have only one sexual partner, but they not closing their heart, they open to love more than one person. Mm -hmm. And for some people it's having multiple sexual partners. That's where swinging comes in. Um, so some people would say they're swinging and they're polyamorous and it's the same thing. Some people would say, no, it's very different. Swinging is more having fun. Mm -hmm. Something we do on the weekend and there is no relationship there involved. There is no emotional connection. Yes. And polyamory is about usually long-term, deep emotional connection and commitment with more than one partner at the same time. Now, it sounds like a lot of hard work. And it can be, absolutely. Just like one relationship is a lot of work, multiple relationships, maybe even more work. Um, 
and there is a lot of honesty, there is a lot of communication going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. There is big commitment to support each other. And then one of the benefits of polyamory, you have support not just from one person, but from multiple partners. So I would think this support doesn't just stop with love. Financial support? Absolutely. People gathering together to pay a mortgage? That's totally possible, yes. So usually these polyamorous relationships within one roof, or is it just like any other relationship? Usually I would say no. But lots of people, of course, get together and um, there are many different situations. There might be a triad or maybe two couples getting together and they share the same house or mm -hmm. maybe more of a community house. And yes, people share the mortgage and responsibilities and raising kids. And it's all in the open and honest and supportive. Yeah. Now, as an alternative lifestyle, mm -hmm. I would think that people you know, who are more prone to that lifestyle would, would seek out others in the mm -hmm. same lifestyle. In our city, in Calgary, is there a polyamorous communities that exist? There is. There are a couple of groups. Uh, they, they're different, but they have something in common. It's providing information and support for people who are new to lifestyle or people who are just exploring. Mm -hmm. People who wonder, like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And there are people who are willing to share their information, their experience. Also for people in alternative lifestyle, to be able to talk to someone who understands, someone who would not judge. So there are a couple of groups. There is a website, um, polycalgary.wordpress.com. polycalgary.wordpress.com. That's right. Okay. And there is a lot of information there. There are discussion groups happening at least once a month. There are pub nights for people just to hang out and talk. And there is nothing you have to do there. You can just be a spectator or you can participate in the discussion. So what kind of turnout are these group discussions are they seeing from Calgarians? Group discussions, I would say, between 20 to 40 people. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe a bit of traction in our city, it sounds like. Absolutely. Now, mm -hmm. I know you've, you've traveled somewhat, it sounds like. Yeah, quite a bit, Quite yes. a bit, actually, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, polyamory, is it, I mean, what, is there anything about it that defines where it's going to take place in the city? Or is it, I mean, it's not economics, I don't think. Hmm. It's just, it's, it's, it's a widespread, I guess, is my question. Hmm, that's, that is a good question. Uh, I, my, my best example of a poly community, very open, very spiritual community is in San Diego. San Diego also happened to be a tantric mecca of North America. The spiritual community was there for 30 or 40 years and it's very open and very loving. And most of the people there, I would say, are polyamorous. Is that right? That's where the show Married and Dating mm -hmm, is happening. Mm, popular program. A right? very popular uh, reality show, yes. Mm -hmm. So Calgary doesn't have community that is as big and there are lots of people who maybe not well, still afraid to come out and yeah. for it to be known. It's still yeah. well, it's a pretty maybe scary just, thing to come out. I would think so. What's the motivation, do you think? I mean, I was, I was kind of scratching my head and then I did a bit of digging around and mm -hmm. a lot of marriages, traditional marriages, fail. About one That's in two right. uh, marriages will fail. And mm -hmm. actually it's estimated that apparently 60% of couples have had one way or another some form of cheating uh, involved. Yes, that's right. Now, this uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, website ashleymadison.com. I'm not. Okay, the way it works essentially it's uh, it's a website to facilitate adulterers. It's oh. probably the simplest way to say it. Okay. Now, in our city, and this was staggering to me, they released their numbers, and for 2012, mm -hmm. Ashley Madison saw 28,000 new signups in Calgary alone. In Calgary alone. Now, wow. It mm -hmm. blew my hair back. I could not yeah. believe that. So then I have to ask the question, are these the factors that are maybe driving people away from the traditional role of, uh, of marriage mm -hmm. into you know, giving something like uh, polyamory a try? Your well, opinion. I mean, it's a tough question. That's an interesting question, yes. But I would say being single is hard, dating is hard, yep. being married is hard, being poly is hard. There is no easy way, there is no easy answer. It's people's commitment to their own personal growth and their own relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you have that commitment and it's bulletproof, you're working on whatever relationship it is. If you don't have that commitment, you're cheating, you find finding ways out, mm -hmm. different exits, well, it's not going to work very well long term. So what about the history of polyamory? Then? Oh, oh, okay. I mean, the role yes. of, uh, of the husband and a wife, marriage, is mm -hmm. in, the, in the scope of humanity uh, and civilization is yeah. a relatively new way uh, 
of, of union, a new way of living life. Mm -hmm. On the grand scheme of things, I mean, for mm -hmm. many, it's been around for a few thousand years, sure. Yeah. So let's take a step way, way back. Right. Wasn't always the case, was it? No, ab absolutely not. And polyamory or polygamy was well known and practiced in so many different parts of the world throughout the centuries. Um, ancient Greece, ancient China, ancient Rome. Um, in matriarchal societies, when mm -hmm. the goddess and the woman was worshipped, women had the freedom to have as many partners as they wanted. And it was not just okay, it was normal and beautiful mm -hmm. in patriarchal societies. Women lost that freedom. Mm -hmm. The men, however, not only were able to, but were encouraged in some society having multiple wives. In some society, it's one wife. It's a traditional marriage, mm -hmm. but marriage based more on politics than mm -hmm. anything else. And having lovers or concubines was okay, was encouraged. Um, in Europe, France or England, the court of love, and it was known you can only find love in the affairs and not in the marriage. Mm -hmm. So if you look back, this lifestyle was totally welcome and encouraged, and in different times it was absolutely condemned. Mm -hmm. So which is the more natural approach then? Oh, that's a big question. That depends well, we've who, got a few who, minutes. who you ask. Well, we'll and some people would absolutely argue that people by nature are polyamorous. Some people would argue that men by nature are polyamorous, but not women. It and seems awfully convenient for, for guys. That's exactly it. That's <laughs> a wonderful excuse. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking about nature, my belief is men and women are exactly the same. The cultural conditioning, mm -hmm. the generations after generations, um, the pressure on women to be this nice wife. Right, right and be only okay with one man in her life. That pressure is huge. So for women to openly explore that, it's much harder than for men who for generations, it was just not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Polygamy mm. and, and, and polyamory, uh, big difference, big difference. Now, what, what's the view uh, from those involved in polyamorous relationships toward polygamy? Because to me, it seems that poly, polyamory mm -hmm. is uh, it's about equality. It's about the same opportunities afforded to all members in the relationship. Now, correct yes. me if I'm wrong, but yes. that's my understanding. Yes, absolutely. Whereas polygamy, clearly a little bit different. Men taking multiple wives mm -hmm. uh, with these rigid uh, traditional roles. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the view from the polyamorous community? Is this something that's frowned upon? Well, polygamy is illegal well, of in, course. in Canada. Right. Uh, so it's not something that could be openly practiced. Uh, in many cultures, again, if you're looking back in history, the man could have many wives, mm -hmm. but only if he could support them and give them the lifestyle that they deserve. Right. These women were honored. They had equal rights. Um, sometimes this is not the case here, and then again, different cultures and different traditions abused that. Yeah. Um, polyamory in, in North America, it's about freedom. It's about self-expression. It's about freedom of connection with someone as deep as we want to take it yeah. in this moment. It's not about sexual connections, not necessarily. And of course, that's the way anything poly is spun uh, in North America, isn't it? It's a lot like, uh, well, like Tantra, for mm -hmm. example, where the first thing that pops to mind, because you know, the way it's been spun in the media for, yes. for years is, of course, uh, is sex. It's sex. That's but that's right. not the case. That's not the case at all. Tantra is a spiritual system. It's so much more about your spiritual growth. It's a path to enlightenment. Yet in the, in the West, we, um, we took the part about sex. My teacher told me out of 10,000 volumes written about Tantra, there might be three pages there about sex. Because tantra is an all-inclusive system. It embraces sex like everything else in life. Mm -hmm. Yet here in the West, we took those three pages and we ran with it and because we needed it most. Sexually, people are so repressed here. We have so much guilt and shame and fear around sexuality. And really, there is no reason for this. Those are terrible words to describe something that should be uh, a celebration of souls, yes, is it not? Yes, exactly. A, a physical connection, a heart-to-heart -heart connection, a spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. It's something mm -hmm. so beautiful to share with another or with others. So in your teachings then, is that a mm -hmm. hurdle that you have to, to really have people get over in order to fully, I guess, appreciate and understand what it is you're doing? 
It, it is. People hear about it. People hear about tantric events that I do, and they think, well, what's happening there? Is that an orgy? Mm. And not at all. The events mm -hmm. are non-sexual mm -hmm. at all. It's fully closed. It's so much about open-heart connection with, that, with mm. others. It is about true intimacy. In the West, we equal intimacy to sex, but it doesn't have to be. It's a deep, true, intimate connection with mm. self first, and then with another. It's fascinating. It's the way that we skew things. Um, we do, yes. Why? Why do you think that's specific to North America? Why is it like that? Oh, well, there are many answers to this question. question. Um, and we probably don't want to go there, but it's... Religion, it's, sells, it's it? religion, of course, it's politics, it is what mm. sells, it's a way yeah. to manipulate people. How often women who feel repressed in the society found a pretty good way to manipulate men mm. using sex. Mm -hmm. It's the same way, way for men to use women for sex. It's really very unfortunate and hopeful, hopefully, with more tantric teaching, with more open conversations like this, we can bring this to light. Hopefully. <laughs> I hope so. Folks, we're going to take a quick break. Here's what our resident Rat Pack has to say. I'm a big fan of this polyamory thing because I think it actually puts a name to what really goes on in real relationships with real people. It should not ever be confused with polygamy or swinging because it isn't those things. It's, it's, an, it's an open situation where you say your, your partner is aware that you also have intimate feelings for somebody else. The thing is, if a person can love all their children who are distinctly different from each other, they should just say, I'm also capable of loving other people who are different from my spouse. It's good, we should go with it. I don't think polyamory is a particularly good idea. I think it's kind of like world peace and no armies in the world ever. I think it's one of those things that you can proposition somebody and it seems like it should work out, but I don't think it would ever work out because we have the freedom to do it if we wanted to. It's not polygamy, it's not illegal, but people are against it for a particular reason because of the experience that they might have had. They might have had somebody cheat on them before, or they might have had somebody not be faithful, not be enough for somebody else and they want to be all that a person could be in a particular relationship. I think that's why it just wouldn't fly. Thank you, Aubrey. Welcome back. Tonight we're discussing polyamorous relationships. Now, I'll let you respond to our rant pack there. Mm -hmm. Ike, uh, not a great idea, he doesn't think. What do, you, what do you have to say to Ike? Well, what I want to say... Hmm. I'm not here to say that one lifestyle is better than the other. There no, is no not. one can say what's right for you. Mm -hmm. There are many benefits of poly relationship and many, many hard things Some about challenges. it. Yeah. There are many challenges. Yes, absolutely. It's not a good excuse for cheating, which many people now using. Oh, yeah, sorry, I cheated on you, but that's because I'm polyamorous. That does not work. Well, that'd be a tough sell, that's, I think, for a lot of that's people. That's not going to sell. Yes, no, no, that is no, no. not an excuse for cheating. Uh, it is a great way to start deep, honest communication with your partner. That's one thing that happens in poly relationships. There is lots of communications awesome. and lots of talking. Yes. So to say this is a great idea for everyone, absolutely not. Right. Just like marriage. Just like traditional marriage. Just, just like marriage. For some people, they thrive in it and it's great. And some people know it isn't. Yeah. So the, 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 there, there we go. Whatever works yeah. for you. This is about information that you're not alone, if this is something you're considering, if this is something you're curious, or well, maybe I am polyamorous. Mm -hmm. Well, you're totally not alone. It is fascinating. Mm -hmm. But I've got to ask though, the nuts and bolts of it. Sure. Like Valentine's Day. Oh. I'm in a polyamorous <laughs> relationship, let's say. Yes. Uh, hypothetically, we're going out for dinner. Mm -hmm. Who am I taking? Who's coming to dinner with me? Is everyone going as a group? How does that work? Oh, that's a great question. There is lots of scheduling happening yes, in poly relationship. So. Lots of negotiation. Mm. Absolutely. Sometimes feelings get hurt. Expectations. We're bringing all that to the table. So we're talking about this. This works differently for different people. Some people might be living together as a triad or different combination of things. Yeah. They will celebrate Valentine's all together. Is that right? Some people would have what they call a primary relationship. Maybe it's their spouse, a man or a woman who they have children with. Okay. And then they have other secondary re relationships. And the understanding there is Valentine's or Christmas, I'm here with my primary partner. And I find some other ways to also celebrate or be with a secondary partner. So, so it's whatever works. There is defined roles then, it sounds like. 
Well, in so some, in some ways so there are very defined roles. Some people would do, they would create a contract, mm -hmm. not a legal contract, but a document that outlines what are we here together to do? What are our expectations? What are our needs? What are our boundaries? Mm -hmm. So it's very clear. Some people like the structure of primary and secondary relationship. Some people would say, well, how can I? I love these two people. I'm not going to say this one is primary and this one is secondary. Right. So for some, it's very open. For a lot of people who are married with children, primary comes not because this person is more important, but mm -hmm. because I'm raising children here, I'm paying the mortgage, I will naturally be spending more time here. Mm -hmm. So I'm not loving you more, but my commitment, my this time is commitment is more here. Right. Yeah. But it's finding ways that works. It's by no means ignoring other partners. If they want to be there for Valentine's Day and they can't, well, find another day. It's not all limited to Valentine's. Yeah, it's true. Nor should mm -hmm. it be. Yeah. Um, now, okay, the trust thing is mm -hmm. huge. I'm still oh, trying to wrap yes. my head around how, how that would go. Um, right. Trust is paramount, it seems, mm -hmm. in polyamorous relationships. And I can't help but think that a healthy polyamorous relationship could be a really uh, a good tool for those in traditional relationships mm -hmm. uh, to almost harness the mechanisms in place to have that same trust. Yeah. How are we missing the mark with the traditional relationships? Mm -hmm. What is it going on in poly? What's that? There's something there right. that's, uh, that's clearly lending itself to that communication and right. trust. Right. Yeah, th that's a great question. Um, Maybe because poly relationships, it tends to bring everything, all the challenges in the relationship, it brings it to the surface. Mm. If something maybe in a traditional monogamous marriage, you might not be willing to talk about it because jealousy and trust is yeah. the same issues in the usual marriage as it is in poly relationship. It is there, we choose not to talk about it. In poly, it's not even a choice anymore. We have to talk about it if you want to have a healthy, relationship and there are so many tools and there is so many much information available how to have these conversations they're challenging conversations how to create the space for everyone to be able to share what they're really feeling mm -hmm. poly it's not something we can do it's not something you can take for a team yeah. if i'm not feeling it we better be talking about it and it's not unusual to take the six months or two a year before the couple makes a shift from a traditional marriage to a poly relationship. It sometimes takes that long to talk about it. Is that right? It is. So it's a real commitment then. It's, it is. It sounds like once, uh, I mean, I guess, probably a tough question, mm -hmm. question to answer, but. Oh, of course. W I mean, when you're poly for a couple years, is it, is it rare to see polyamorous relationships revert back to traditional marriages? Or is that something that just seems to carry? That's, it's a lifestyle that's, change, a mentality change. That's, it that's, like. that's a good question. It is a lifestyle change, mm -hmm. yes. Of course. And for some couples who decide to do it together, it's an ultimate test, make it or not. Some couples break up because no, they cannot handle this. Mm -hmm. But it's not because they decided to be poly they broke up. They probably would break up anyway. Yeah. They just brought sure. it up sooner. Sure. Uh, some people decide, they try it and no, this is not for me. This is not what I want, but at least I've tried. Yeah. Some people say, wow, I found, this is it, this is me, I belong here, I found something I've been looking for all my life, and it totally works. And I, I also wanted to mention, for some people, it's a very long-term commitment. Some people are in a poly relationship with two or three or four people or a group of people for majority of their lives. And some people would flow from one relationship to another, like mm -hmm. lasting six months to a year. So there is no there is no standard here. It's really what works for you. Are we going to see in 20 years, 30 years, the elderly still involved in polyamorous relationships? Does it happen now? I mean, I can't say oh, I know many. Oh, it like absolutely that, happens now. Absolutely, and lots of people who started the sex revolution in in the states they're still yeah. out there. Yeah. And again, this is not the topic we usually talk about, but it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it's sure. a normal part of life. Um, Whatever makes you happy and you're not hurting anybody else, come on. Right? That is it. It's yeah. consensual. Everyone's happy. Yeah. There's a bit of concern, though, um, with the kind of almost a cult-like mentality amongst, mm -hmm. I think it's sort of how it's perceived from an mm -hmm. outside point of view. Mm -hmm. I was watching a documentary and there was, you know, a few families, actually. Mm -hmm. So now we're talking about uh, the raising of children. Yes, absolutely. And I think some people had, uh, I guess, a question about ethics mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes to raising children in that type of an environment. Right. What are the challenges? Um, is it ethical, first and foremost? 
That's, that's a, that is a good question. Yes, what is ethical? What, what, is, what is moral? Um, I grew up in Soviet Union, an atheistic state. We didn't have church. And some people here who hear that, they think, oh, but what about morals? Mm -hmm. Well, we have the same morals and the same ethical standards as most of the, most of the population. It just was not led by church. So same thing here. Uh, this is a choice that people make. Raising up children who are happy and healthy and supported in their life and whatever they want to do. I think it's beautiful. Children, small children don't question it. They think mm -hmm. this is normal. Yeah. I grew up and uh, they, they would say, and there is mom and dad, and there is aunt and uncle. And yeah, there sure. is, yeah. When they grow up and they realize this is different from the rest of the society, that's when the challenges I think it would be up. a challenge. Though. It is challenging. I, I think there may be a bit of merit to that. I mean, it's not as though society is going to cater to these people. I mean, there, there will be a time when they come to realize, whoa, wait a minute, my perception of yeah. how society yeah. functions is right. quite skewed. So that's right, but it's like, it's like when people who were divorced and, um, or maybe gay marriages and ra them raising children. A few years back, it was really unheard of, and now there is more and more couples. That's like a this. good answer. That is a good answer. It's a fair answer. Well, someone says that Paul is a new gay, and that's the word. The same. Uh, I'm not hip to the I, game. I, really. I don't. I don't, I don't want to go there, but that's what some people would say that. Now it's hopefully becoming normal and accepted. There is nothing wrong with that. This is just a different. <laughs> it is, is fascinating. Yeah, so the same thing with Polly. I, I hope soon that we'll be just considered, well, this is your choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to jump to a quick break. Folks, our half hour is almost mm -hmm. up. Time flies, I know. Uh, we're going to wrap up real quick here and wrap, or pardon me, and end with our random question, as per always. Stay with us. I think polyamory is a very interesting topic, especially in a city that's known to be as conservative as Calgary. Um, the definition of polyamory is being in an open and intimate relationship with more than one person. I think people have a tendency to think that uh, and confuse polyamory with polygamy or swinging or whatever, but I don't believe that's the case. I do believe that people are meant to be with more than one person. I'd like to say that humans in general can be with one person. Whether or not that's possible, I don't know. I do think polyamory is a great topic and it needs to be discussed further. Okay, now the way we're going to wrap the show, the way this works, Kate. I have no idea what's on these questions. I'll let you pull one out. Okay. I'll read it and you can weigh in. Okay, here we go. Here. Okay, and the question, Jenna, what's the best gift you've ever received in your life, your whole life? Oh. Favorite gift? Well, that's a great question. What is the best gift I ever... Um, wow, I haven't thought about that. We'll put hmm. you on the spot here, it sounds that's, like. That's, that's right. Um, hmm. Well, you're giving it some thought. I, uh, Was yeah, it a nice I, meal, maybe? No? A nice what? A nice meal. Maybe somebody took you out for a real nice meal, special day. Well, that doesn't feel as that special. No, I think it's a you're day... You're killing me. That's my favorite. Wait, come on. <laughs> I think it's a day for me. It's the things that, that I get to choose what we get to do. And uh, it's just a whole day that is all about me. Cool. Cool. Hmm. So maybe like a little what, spa treatment type thing? Uh, no, spending the day together with, with my partner and just the whole day all about me. That's that cool. Was, that was a special gift. That's yes. sure. For me, it was this, uh, I had this cool scooter when I was a kid, you know, mm -hmm. it didn't have a motor and it was like terribly hazardous, mm -hmm. but uh, I'd rip my scooter down the, the little slope in front of our house. But you know what happened to that scooter? I hope we got a few minutes for the story. Somebody stole my scooter and took all oh. the air out of the tires and left it on the side of the road, you know? Oh no. It was a crushing day. Mm -hmm. Folks, that's basically all the time we have. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Hopefully we shed some light on what we think is an interesting issue. As always, you can keep the conversation rolling on Facebook or on Twitter. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss, please drop us a line. Thanks and take care. <laughs>